Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Hermela, and if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you guys can tell by the title of the video, I will be preparing a three course meal for a upcoming dinner party at our house that we'll be hosting. Um, we are excited to host them. We have gotten into hosting, and so I'm gonna go ahead and prepare a appetizer, a dinner, as well as a dessert using some of my favorite barefoot products. Today's video is sponsored by them, so I'm excited to jump into some of the products that I'm using and how I prepare each dish. Um, I like to prepare the food uh, a day before. It allows me to kind of relax that day when they come and prepare on decorations, cleaning, etc, etc. So if you guys are interested to see what I create, prepare, go ahead and keep watching. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the dinner just because that takes the longest to create, prepare, um, and just allow it to simmer throughout the day. I'll have all of the recipes um, down below in the description box for you guys to check out. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. If you guys have yet to make a beef stew in your life, I promise you this is your sign. It's easy to make, super tasty, and rich in flavor. I'm going to go ahead and prepare all of the produce to help speed up the process before cooking the meat. Prepping really does save you a lot of time. Because Morton and I love this stew so much, I like to always cook it in large batches. This helps to have it for the rest of the week. So what I'm doing is using about four pounds of beef stew meat. I'm gonna go ahead and do it in three batches and then transfer it over to a larger pot. I go ahead and season both sides of the meat with salt and pepper and allow it to brown for about seven to 10 minutes before transferring it over. I just wanted to show you guys what the beef stew meat looks like after being cooked. I have about one more round left and then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the vegetables. I'm just gonna go ahead and add about half a cup of water to deglaze the pot. There's a lot of rich flavors in there, so I'm just gonna transfer it over to the pot. And next I'm gonna add some more olive oil to the pot, let it get hot, and then start cooking the vegetables. After about four to six minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic in as well and let it cook for another minute. Next, I'm moving on to the mushrooms and I'm gonna saute them in butter for about four to five minutes and allow them to brown. Once they've browned, I'm gonna add some salt. After being coated with flour, I'm going to let the mushrooms cook for another minute before transferring it to the pot. When preparing beef stew, I really like to add some red wine. So today I'll be using the Barefoot Cabernet Sauvignon. I love this flavor. It's rich in taste um, and adds a lot of spices to it. So I'll be adding about two cups to the pot. To be honest with you guys, Morton and I have really enjoyed Barefoot for some time now. They have a diverse collection of delicious wines and they really pair well with a lot of different types of food. After adding the wine, I'm also adding about two cups of tomato sauce to the pot. When adding the eight cups of beef broth, I totally realized I had a pot that doesn't fit the beef stew. So you guys will realize later on, I switched to a larger one. After slowly attempting to mix the mixture, I went ahead and started a timer for about an hour and 10 minutes. Once the timer was done, I went ahead and added the baby potatoes to the stew. I'm gonna go ahead and let them cook for about another hour. By this point, most of the work for the stew is done. I'm just gonna let it simmer some more. Usually with the soup, we like to add some French bread on the side to dip it in the soup and it tastes delicious. 
All right guys, time for dessert. Today I'll be making the Moscato pound cake. I found this recipe online and saw how easy it was to make. I'll be using the barefoot pink Moscato. After blending the unsalted butter as well as the sugar, I'm gonna go ahead and add the five large eggs one at a time and really blend and take my time. Once the mixture is all blended out, I'm adding some pure vanilla extract. The recipe also suggests that you could add a lemon extract if you want more of a lemony flavor. I'm adding the flour, the baking soda, as well as the salt to the sifter, and I'm gonna go ahead and sift everything. All right, time for the fun part. I'm adding about 3 fourths cup of the Barefoot Pink Moscato. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the mixture while also adding the dry ingredients. Now that the batter is done, I'm moving on to the pan. I've added some unsalted butter as well as flour to help prevent the cake from sticking. It already looks so delicious. I've already preheated the oven to 325, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the pan in. The cake will cook for about an hour and 15 minutes before it's ready. After it's done, I let the cake sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to allow it to cool down. And just like that, the pound cake looks good. I did not mess it up, it looks so yummy. I'm gonna move on to making the icing, which requires some powdered sugar as well as the barefoot pink Moscato again. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk it and get it into this nice creamy texture. <laughs> To help catch the excess icing from falling on the table, I went ahead and used a aluminum foil underneath. And once the icing is complete and I feel like it is covered well, I'm gonna go ahead and let the cake cool down and let the icing set. All right, dessert is done. I'm gonna go ahead and store the pound cake so that it remains moist and we are good to go. <music> Last but not least, I will be making a charcuterie board for an appetizer. I thought it would be paired with the barefoot buttery chardonnay and it would be a perfect match as it will taste lovely with the cheese and crackers. So I just went ahead and played around and saw what looked best, moved things some around. This was honestly my first time making one of these and I took a lot of inspo from online, but I will have all the ingredients that I used in the description box so you guys can see what I bought. Fun fact about me, I absolutely love cheese. I can eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's honestly one of my favorite types of food. Um, so this is kind of the perfect appetizer in my eyes. I'll have this presented to the guest and they can always enjoy a nice glass of wine on the side. add a bit of festiveness to the board, I went ahead and used some olive leaves and added them in certain areas that I saw they fit best. Okay guys, that is it for the appetizer. It was really quick to make. What I'm gonna do is actually use some plastic wrap and protect it and store it in the fridge so that it's good to go for the dinner tomorrow. I can't wait to pair this with the buttery chardonnay. I think it will be smooth and a great fit for this appetizer. Thank you so much to Barefoot for sponsoring today's video. I will have a link in my description box for you guys to go ahead and check out all their selections. All right guys, that is it for this video. I have prepared each meal. It's all away in the fridge. I've cleaned up the kitchen. That's always important. I don't like to go to bed before cleaning up the kitchen. Um, it's around eight o'clock. I'm pretty exhausted, but I'm very excited about each meal. If you guys are interested to see how I decorate set up for these this party coming up, go ahead and actually watch the next video that comes out after this one. I will be showing you guys all of the dishes as well as the preparation for the table, my makeup, and getting dressed. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to, to give this video a big thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.